What is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? So I made a video on August 1st of 2021 predicting where the NBA's top free agents would sign. And today I'm going to be reacting to that video to see if I was right about any, if I was completely wrong about any. And yeah, there's probably a good chance that I was wrong on a decent amount of these. It's also funny to see like me being kind of tan in the summer and me being so pale now. But yeah, either way, I hope you guys do enjoy this. Drop a thumbs up if you do. If you like me reacting to my old kind of takes, let me know down below and I'll continue to do so. So without further ado, let's get into it and hear what I have to say. Off the list that you think I should have mentioned and where they will go, please let me know down below. So we're going to start off with Bobby Portis. He just came off a pretty nice... All right, already off 2-0 and one start. His finals run, I think he'll get a decent payday. I think he's going to sign with the Sacramento Kings. They can go out there, get another wing. We don't know what's going on with Marvin Bagley. They're going to lose... Rashawn Holmes, so they could use another front court guy. Next up, we have Campaign, who really made his payday. Through there we go. Okay. Like, re signings, they're like, okay, like, sure, I'll take credit, but like, they're not that impressive. If you're predicting somebody to jump from team to team, then it's impressive. Throughout the 2021 playoffs, being a great backup point guard and sometimes starting point guard for the Phoenix Suns when Chris Paul was out, I think he's going to re sign with the Phoenix Suns on that four-year, like, $48 million mid-level exception that they can offer. That was wrong. I think he got a lot less than Current, that. I don't see him leaving Phoenix, and I think Robert Sarver will pay the luxury tax after re-signing Mikel Bridges and DeAndre Aiden. They also didn't sign Aiden. And there's another L. Neurons the well re-signed with the Knicks. I wish this happened. Hated the Knicks signing the that. is next. He came off a great season for the New York Knicks, was one of the better defensive centers in the league in 2021. And I think that there's very few teams in the league that do have a lot of cap space, and I think he's looking for that long-term contract. I don't think the Knicks will give it to him because the Knicks are looking for longer cap flexibility. Well, this was completely wrong. Completely wrong because the Knicks were doing the opposite, and they gave him a multi-year deal, and they gave Fortier and Rose and Burks multi-year contracts. So I think he's going to sign with the Spurs on a multi-year contract. They could use some competition in that kind of front court with like no more Marcus Aldridge. It's really just Jakob Pertle there and like Lucas Shalmanich. They can use another guy in that front court. He plays hard. Pops love him. The Miami Heat are going to be signing this next guy and that is Blake Griffin. Now I could see Blake Griffin just re-signing with the Brooklyn Nets on a minimum but I think he still wants to get paid a little bit. Of okay so at least I thought that it could happen but yeah I'm striking out on a lot of these right now. Money. It's looking like that the Miami Heat might decline the option on Goran Dragic. Shams just reported that that's likely to happen. If it doesn't, don't blame me. I'm recording this before this is all happening. I don't think they're going to be picking up the option on Udala or Riza. So I think they'll go after Blake Griffin and not pay him too much money on a one or two year deal. Andre Drummond is next up, and I really don't think. Another L. I think he would get a payday that he wants from any other team, but I think he would still like to compete for a ring. So I think he's going to re sign the Lakers because the Lakers will have bird rights on him and they can really use any bench guys they can get. So I think Drummond and the Lakers will agree on a deal that won't pay him a lot of money, but he'll be back in LA, he'll compete, and he's already made enough money from the Pistons and the Cavs. Kendrick Nunn will be switching to... Another L. Teams here. I think he's going to sign with the Minnesota Timberwolves. They just traded away Ricky Rubio. I think they're going to use their middle exception on a backup point guard behind D'Angelo Russell. And I think Kendrick Dunn is a perfect kind of young slasher, run and gun type guy for that second unit that can play with like Jaden Daniels, Leandro Balmaro. It'll be pretty fun to watch. Taylor Norton Tucker is going to be a restricted free agent. All right. Do I give my credit for a re signing? <laughs> I just haven't got any right so far, so I'll take what yeah, I can I get. Re signs with the Lakers. Now, I could see him signing with like. A Wizards. All right, also move my face Kings. over here. I think I'll look a little bit better. Or a Spurs, but I think the Lakers will match any other deal, and their ownership, the Bus family, is going to be willing to pay the luxury tax eventually after having to pay LeBron, AD, the other AD coming back in Drummond, and also now Taylor Horton. I just scared Drummond, the AD that came. Serge Ibaka's Clippers 10. Oh my god, can I get any of these right? I actually don't remember these at all. Like, what I predicted. So, I don't know if I'm going to get any. Like, I just want one that I get right that I predict from a player going from an old team to a new team. I don't want to keep predicting re-signings. Those aren't that impressive. Oh, so, at this moment, he has an option to his contract next year's season. And, I don't know. I don't think he's going to re-sign with the Clippers. I just don't really feel like it's going to happen. I think he's going to join Blake Griffin in Miami and sign with the Miami Heat. The Heat are loading up on some bigs that could shoot. Speaking of the Clippers, Reggie Jackson, like campaign, Bobby... A re-signing. Portis made himself a lot of money in the 2021 playoffs. I think the Clippers are going to be willing to pay Reggie Jackson a decent amount of money with their mid-level exception. Maybe what campaign got about like 12 uh, mil a year around there. I think he's going to re-sign with the Clippers. Like I mentioned before about Goran Dragic, it's looking like that he will be an unrestricted free. All right. Well, I didn't predict the signing trade of Kyle Lowry was going to happen at all. 
So I didn't, I guess, know where Dragic would sign. I mean, him on the Celtics would have been great. If I predicted, like, the Nets, that would have been cool because of the buyout thing. But, yep, another L for me. For so the first time in a little bit, and I think he's going to sign with the Boston Celtics. I feel like the Celtics, after kind of trading away or using their trade exception and Moses Brown on Josh Richardson and kind of getting out of Horford for Kemba Walker, I think they, they need a point guard. They really can't roll into next year's season with, like, Marcus Smart being the one and Peyton Pritchard. I think they need a veteran there. And I expect them to go out and get Goran Dragic. We have Devontae Graham up next. I don't think the Hornets are going to be able to bring back Malik Monk and Devontae Graham. I didn't mention Malik Monk. But here's a bonus signing. I think he's going to re-sign with the Charlotte Hornets. And I think Devontae Graham is going to go to the Washington Wizards. They're going to have a little bit of money after this Russell Westbrook trade. Okay, so I guess the graphic was wrong on this. So I predicted Monk to re-sign wrong. And Devontae Graham to sign with the Wizards wrong. The Wizards went a different direction than Spencer Dinwiddie. So I'm sure I got did what he wrong as well. They might go after some young shooting in Devontae Graham to help space the floor for Bradley Beal and some of their other guys. Derrick Rose will be a free agent this year for hey. the first time in two years when he ended up signing with the Detroit Pistons. I believe he's going to re-sign with the New York Knicks on a one or two year deal. If that It's a two year deal. It will have a team option. I think he likes New York a lot. He had a lot of fun last year kind of being a leader on the team. They were good. He thinks that they could be good next year as well. He likes Tom Thibodeau. I think he'll be a Nick next season. Lowry Marketing will be a restricted free agent joining all... Another wrong <laughs> prediction here. So Kendrick Nunn, who I believe is a restricted free agent that we've mentioned so far, and Taylor Horton Tucker, as well as Devontae Graham. And I think that Lowry is going to re-sign with the Chicago Bulls. I don't really know if a team's going to go out there and give him a lot of money and the Bulls will be matching it, but I think the Bulls will get something done with him after they go after maybe a big fish, a big point guard that we'll mention maybe in a little bit. So I think that they're going to be able to bring back Lowry Markkinen on a long-term deal, a three- or four-year deal. Not sure how much, though. Is he going to get 20 mil a year? Is he going to get 15? Is he going to get 25? I'm not really sure. Okay, 25 was a lot, but what do you get? Like 15 around there? Where his market's at. Next up, we have Will Barton, who is going to, I believe, opt out of his player deal. I think he's going to work on a deal with the Denver Nuggets and go back there on a multi-year contract. They are paying Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic a lot of money right now. They're going to have to pay Mikel, uh, Mikel, Michael Porter Jr. Uh, this offseason, pretty much, if they want to, because he'll be restricted free agent next year. Who knows? They're going to probably work on like a super match for Jokic, but I still think that they're going to go over the luxury tax for now or go up against the hard cap. Or Will Barton, maybe on a one-year deal or two-year deal to try to make a run at it all next year. Big free agent here who I think is going to get a multi-year deal making about like 15 to 18 million. I think, didn't Rashad Holmes get like 4 for 40 or 4 for 48? He didn't get like as much as maybe I thought, which makes sense for his kind of positional skill set. Uh, but yeah, he re-signed with the Kings. I thought he would go to the Thunder. I thought the Thunder would use their cap space. They didn't at all, really. And now he's in that's with Sean Holmes. I believe he's going to sign with the OKC Thunder. The Thunder didn't really add any big man throughout the draft. Now, yes, they do have Puka Zepski. They do have Darius Basley. They trade away Al Horford. They trade away Moses Brown. I think they're going to go after that five. Maybe they'll be in a Jared Allen market. Maybe they're going to be in a Nerlens Noel market, who I already mentioned. But I believe that they're going to lock up for Sean Holmes on a multi-year deal because it's looking like he will not be going back to Sacramento. And I should have mentioned this before about Sacramento, but I know they got Tristan thompson oh and i guess also for the celtics yeah like chris dunn i don't think they go in next year's season with peyton pritchard and chris dunn kind of forgot to mention that three team trade i forgot that happened there's been so many deals going down we have kelly Oubre up next and I think wait so i knew chris dunn got traded but then i still i don't even know but kelly Oubre go to the knicks okay i guess this was me predicting a forward or just a wing to go to the knicks and i picked the wrong one Evan Fournier ended up signing. I chose Kelly Oubre. I mean, on the contracts they got, I would rather have had Kelly Oubre. He's going to be signing with the New York Knicks. Either it's going to be a one-year deal with a high AAV, similar to like J.J. Reddick's contract with the Sixers a couple of years ago. The Knicks could give him one year, 25 mil, $20 million, and just help them compete next year while still leaving some cap flexibility open next year. Kelly Oubre can come to the Knicks, but maybe that wouldn't have been a bad idea. Maybe that wouldn't have been a bad idea. Kelly Oubre got $26 million guaranteed from the Hornets. I would have gave him $22 million, $20 million just for one year. Then giving Fournier 72 or giving him, uh, what is it, like 58, uh, $60 million because the fourth year is not guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'd have a pretty big goal. I still stand by that. I mean, I feel like I kind of had a good vision for the Knicks. Now, I messed up on a lot of things, and you could even see these predictions were very wrong. But uh, me saying the Knicks should not extend Randall, they did. Um, who did I want the Knicks? Well, I, mm, I kind of messed up the Knicks draft. I, I would have been happy with Kai Jones and Keon Johnson, and I think I'd rather have Quinn and Grimes over both of them at the moment. There, I can make or play myself a little bit better than I did last year and work on that multi-year deal in 2022 free agency. So I think it would work out for both sides. And I think that 
Kelly Oubre will be signing with the New York Knicks. Evan Fournier was traded from the Magic to the Boston Celtics this past season at the trade deadline. Oh, uh, little did I know. Come on, I believe he will be re-signing with the Boston Celtics. They went out, they got Josh Richardson to help their bench a little bit, even though I think I'd rather have them kept Moses Brown. Really like that pickup for the Dallas Mavericks. They are going to be bringing back Evan Fournier, in my opinion. He was pretty solid for them. He's been playing great overseas in the Olympics. I think it's going to be a win-win deal for both sides. Now, this is the biggest wild card one because I have no idea where he's signing if he doesn't re-sign with the Miami Heat, which I don't think is going to happen. And that is... Well, I was wrong there. Can I get one of these right? Victor Oladipo because he's coming off a major injury and I don't really know. I don't think he's going to get a multi-year deal. I don't see any team really ponying up double-digit like millions for a multi-year contract for Victor Oladipo. So I'm predicting he's going to sign with the Dallas Mavericks on a one-year deal. He's going to be like, all right, I'll be maybe fully healthy mid-season. I get to play. Okay, so I kind of had the right mindset. He wasn't going to get a multi-year contract. He was going to do a one-year smaller deal to prove it, um, get fully healthy mid-year, but just chose the wrong team. With Luka Doncic, it'll be a one-year, maybe fairly cheap deal, $8, $10 million. Eh, make me better. I'm going to work for that multi-year contract in 2022, as I just mentioned with Kelly Oubre and the Mavericks. You're like, all right. It's a low risk high reward. Maybe we can get him for like seven, eight million dollars on a one year deal. He can play some good defense for us. Maybe he'll be a lot better playing around Luka Doncic. We'll see what goes. We have the Knicks signing their second guy in this video, and that is gonna be uh. Spencer <laughs> Dinwiddie. I think Spencer Dinwiddie will get a one or two year contract, similar to Kelly Oubre with a high AAV that can help the Knicks compete next year's season, but still leave a little bit of cap flexibility. To be honest, I still wouldn't have I'd rather have preferred this offseason from the Knicks. You let Noel walk, you re Sign you have a Rose and Dinwiddie like back or a uh, point guard rotation. I like that. You have like Rose Dinwiddie and then you have Barrett, Ubre, Randall, Mitch Rob. I, yeah, I'd have preferred that over this team right now for 2022 or 2023. As the Knicks are, I mean, Dinwiddie struggled in Washington. I mean, there were some locker room things. He's been playing well in Dallas so far, though. Back in the playoffs next year, they might lose some of their free agents. I have them losing their own to the well. We don't know what's going on with Bullock or Burks. And also, one more thing I think he was asked to do a lot for Washington, especially when Bradley Beal was out. Like, Barrett and Randall, I mean, Barrett had a little bit of an injury. Um, at some point where we missed a couple games going into the All-Star break. But Barrett and Randall stayed healthy for most of the season. So, like, and, like, well, you didn't expect D. Rose to get hurt. And, like, you, you would have had maybe Ubre on the team. Like, did what he wouldn't have been asked to, like, be a top scorer. He wouldn't. He would have been, like, that facilitator. He's been great in the clutch for Dallas. I don't know. Would I rather have Dinwiddie? I mean, if I could have had Dinwiddie... You sub out Dinwiddie for Fournier and you sub out Noel for Oubre. Especially Dinwiddie's... I don't know if his third year is fully guaranteed. If it is, then him and Fournier are very similar because Fournier's contract is basically a three-year deal. Um, but if it's like a two-year with a third-year partially guarantee... Ah, but didn't Dinwiddie get like three for 60? That is a lot. But like Fournier is what? Like two or three million less? The next... They've been in the market for Spencer Dinwiddie, then a shooter. I think they prefer Dinwiddie. And Dinwiddie's case, he's probably trying to prove everybody that he was the guy before he got hurt. He was a borderline all-star for the Nets in 2020. And he could probably realize, still being that big market, a lot of eyes on me. He can compete for a playoff spot next year. And like Oubre, try to get that new long-term deal in 2022 or 2023. So the Knicks are adding Derrick Rose, or bringing back Derrick Rose, I should say. Kelly Oubre and Spencer Dinwiddie so far in this video. Duncan Robinson will be a restricted free agent. I believe he's going to resign with the Miami Heat. I could see a team going out there and giving him a lot of money, but I think the Heat will match anything he can get out there because he's a top five shooter in the league and the Heat are, like realize how valuable that is and he'll be coming back to the Miami Heat next year. Dennis Schroeder is also kind of like a Victor Oladipo one. I don't know where he would sign if he doesn't sign with the LA Lakers. Apparently the Knicks are interested. I'm just maybe being in denial and I don't want to see that happen at all unless it's like a one-year contract. So I think that the Lakers, like I mentioned before, that they're going to pay the luxury tax. So I think they're going to bring back Andre Drummond. I think they're going to bring back Taylor Horton Tucker. I think they will also bring back Dennis Schroeder, pay him a decent amount of money to be their sixth man next year. Norman Powell will be a free agent for the Portland Trailblazers. This will actually be kind of a bonus one as well. Gary Trent Jr. I think they're both going to resign with their teams. Norman Powell going back to the Blazers and Gary Trent Jr. back to the Raptors. They, it just makes sense. Jared Allen is up next and I think he's going to resign with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now I could see like I think the Cavs are going to match any deal most like and I could see him getting traded next offseason because I think the Cavs want to see 
how him and Evan Mobley work out in that front court if it works out well. Yeah, he's going to stay there for the remainder of his contract. But if it doesn't, then I think it could be like a one-year deal. Not like a one-year deal, but he plays for one year and then gets traded and only plays one year of that contract. Lonzo Ball is next. And yes, since I had the Nick... Okay, I kind of just zoned out there for a second. Like me just trying to think like... Am I going to get any of these right? Norman Powell got right. Jared Allen technically got right. Lonzo Ball. Whoa, wait. I got one right. I, it took us 10 minutes into the video. 10 minutes into the video where I finally predicted somebody to go from an old team to a new team. Now like a one-year deal. Let's go. Plays for one year and then gets traded and only plays one year of that contract. Lonzo Ball is next. Let's go. Yes, since I had the Knicks getting Spencer Dinwiddie. I don't think he's going to sign with the New York Knicks, unfortunately. I yeah, I really wanted Lonzo to the Knicks, but... I don't know what the hell the Knicks were thinking. I wish he will. I really wish he would. I wish the Knicks would go after him. I would give him a multi-year contract because he's that good. He'd make us that much better. He'd make Randall better. He'd make RJ better. Mitch better. Obi better. Quickly better. Grimes better. But I don't think that the Knicks are going to do it because it just seems too good to me. So I think he's going to sign with the Chicago Bulls on like a four-year, $80, $90 million contract. Close. And I'm going to be super jealous. Mike Conley's up next. The Utah Jazz have been clearing up. We're trying to get under the luxury tax slash hard cap to go out and get Mike Conley. I think that's like they, that's pretty much a done deal already. We'll be going back to the Jazz on a two, three-year deal. John Collins is next. I think there's going to be a lot of suitors out there. Maybe the Knicks will get involved. The Spurs the Kings, the Mavericks, but I think the Hawks are going to match his deal. Okay, I'm intrigued, because I probably had Kawhi going back to the Clippers. I'm intrigued where I had DeRozan going as, a free agent. as we're getting to the bigger names. And Lowry. Where did I have Lowry? I think I might have had Lowry going to either New Orleans or Dallas. It'll be Hawk next season. DeMar DeRozan is... Mm, damn it. Him and Luka, though, that would have been a good pickup. Next, and yes, I believe that DeMar DeRozan will not be a spur next year. I think that's pretty much 100% guarantee. Could be in a sign and trade, but I believe he's going to be signing with the Dallas Mavericks. That's a sign and trade. Mavericks really need to go out and get a like a good free agent to help out Luka to try to get out of round one next year. You have, would have Oladipo, as I just mentioned. You'd have Moses Brown. You'd have DeMar DeRozan, as well as Luka and KP. I think that team is good enough to win at least a playoff series with Jason Kidd as your new head coach in 2022. He would just need to work on his three-point shot. And I actually kind of like that offseason for the Mavericks. Uh... If they ended up with Oladipo and DeRozan. And DeMar DeRozan's old Raptor buddy, Kyle Lowry, I believe, will also be leaving the Raptors. I don't think anybody really predicted the Heat because nobody thought they would be able to clear up cap space. Um, and they were able to. Yeah. It shocked a lot of us. He's been there for so long, but I think he's going to sign with the New Orleans Pelicans. I think it would come down to pretty much the Miami Heat or Pelicans, and I think the Pelicans are... Oh, I did mention the Heat. Oh, shit. Okay, I'll take that. He's going to pony up. A lot more money. This was pretty much set in stone that they wanted to go after Kyle Lowry when they traded away Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams. They want to get Zion Williamson that playoff experience. They want to at least get Brandon Ingram some playoff experience as well since he hasn't been in the playoffs yet in his young career. And Kyle Lowry said it's not really all about the winning at the moment. It's really about the years and the dollars because he already got his ring. He doesn't like to compete, but he wants to get that long-term security under his contract and still get paid a lot of money. And I can see that happening with the Pelicans. And then the last two are going to be opt-ins with their kind of current team. I think Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns, he will opt out, but they will work on like a three-year $90 million contract, and he'll be back on the Phoenix Suns. And then the big fish out there, I don't think he's switching teams. Yeah, Kawhi Leonard, I believe he's probably going to opt in and then just see how the Clippers do this year and probably work on a new extension at the end of this year's season. Or yeah, no, he got it done in the beginning of the year. So, yeah... Throughout all those, I I didn't do well. I mean, free agency predictions are tough, and the only one I got right of a guy switching teams was Lonzo Ball. I, I did mention the Heat for Kyle Lowry, but clearly I wasn't uh, didn't have the balls to pull the trigger on that one. So yeah, you can see how tough these are. Like you can make fun of me down below. You can let me know if yours were any bit different this year. I was actually looking at this list today of the free agents upcoming, and it's a like not a great list. Honestly, like a lot of player options, like Wall's going to opt in, Russ is going to opt in, Beal might opt out, but a Supermax is coming, Kyrie said he wants to re-sign in Brooklyn, Harden, I think already opted in, or either way, he's probably going back to Philly, um, and then like, the next big name is Zach Levine, I don't know why an extension hasn't been done with Zach Levine yet, like pay this man, give this man 35, 40, mm, yeah, give him 35 mil a year, if he becomes a free agent, would be kind of nuts if he wants out. I don't think so. He's a big market on a good team that still has a future. Like, uh, I mean, Levine and Buc or the Rosen and Bucevic are older, but still, I don't know. Like, it's just weird that hasn't happened yet. And then the next best name is Yusuf Nurkic, TJ Warren. 
I mean, Aiden, I don't think he switches teams, though. I would be very surprised if they traded him. It'd be silly. Maybe if they win it all, Sarver would be like, screw it. I got the ring. I don't really need to sign Aiden. Um, so let's trade him. I, I don't know. Maybe there's stuff like that out there that happens. Colin Sexton is another semi-big name that could switch teams. Yeah, it's not the greatest free agency class ever. I wouldn't say... I mean, out of pure like, talent up here at the top, it might be better than last year. But, like, possibilities of switching teams. I mean, like, I think Beal gets the Supermax. I don't think Kyrie leaves. Westbrook and Wall, I mean, they'd be dumb not to opt in. And Harden, I think, is staying as well. So, maybe Levine becomes a wild card if the Bulls get bounced in round one. And I don't know. I, I don't. Crazier things have happened before. Um, and, yeah, maybe DeAndre Aiden gets interesting. But I doubt it since he's restricted. Unless a team like the Knicks or the Thunder throw a godfather package at... Um, um, at phoenix and they're like you know what? we just want it all like sure let's trade it and like we don't need to pay him <laughs> i don't know like the the owner could be something like that I, I don't know so yeah let me know what you guys think of the video down below drop a like if you did enjoy i love you guys i'll catch you on the next one peace